Joining us now, Eyewitness News reporter N.J. Burkett. N.J., you have been reporting in Israel since 2000. You've been there for more than a dozen times. Tell us what the people of Israel and Palestine are going through right now. You know, Shirley, I was struck by the interview you did with Shia because, uh, you know, you know what, what hit me immediately was that this is a new generation of Israelis who are now having to live with the threat of attack and in this case, you know, being under attack. So it, it, it's just so tragic, really, for both sides, for both peoples, because uh, in, in large measure, you know, their leaders have failed them. Mm. You know, the, the people themselves want peace. They want to be able to live their lives and raise their families in peace, and their political leaders can't seem to get it together. That, to me, is the big tragedy of the whole situation in that part of the world. Let's talk about how this possibly could have happened. Israel is, of course, known for its intelligence. Mm. How were they caught so completely off guard? And what is the latest on reports that Iran may have been involved? Well, you know, it's interesting, right? Because uh, the Israeli satellite network and the Israeli uh, human intelligence network, intelligence network can tell you where the Iranian nuclear reactors are, right? Mm -hmm. They can't see these guys training for a land, air, and sea incursion literally under their own noses. So, so what I'm hearing from people over there is that, you know, yes, they're terrified about what's happening. They're, they're fearful for the people who've been kidnapped. Uh, but they're also really mad at the government for not being able to uh, have protected them from this, how they could not have anticipated what was going on. Uh, I, I think ultimately uh, it's entirely possible that Netanyahu may sack the head of Mossad um, you know, simply because people are turning their attention to him and saying, well, wait a minute, were you distracted by your internal political problems over there that, that you couldn't see what was happening under your own nose? So, so yeah, there's going to be a, a, a huge um, uh, reckoning that the government, Netanyahu in particular, uh, they're all going to have to deal with this. And the, the human price, I mean, yeah. we're all watching this from the U.S. Yeah. and there's no way we can't be impacted on a personal level. But what about on a, a broad level, the U.S.? What is the U.S. response and what's being done to keep this from growing? Well, look, uh, American uh, political leaders have tried to walk a fine line, in, in particular the Democratic political leaders, in saying, you know what, we think that the Israeli government needs to take less of a hard line on the Palestinians politically. They need to get together and come up with some sort of a solution, a settlement, right? But on the other hand, they're doing everything they can to, to support Israel militarily. Uh, that was the position of the Obama administration, to the Biden administration as well. Uh, so, so while they may say you're making a mistake politically by not, you know, uh, ma making a solution, a peace with the Palestinians. Uh, on the other hand, if you're attacked, we're right there with you. And and what's particularly striking about what's going on now is that the U.S. is moving a, an aircraft carrier right. into the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I mean, that is a huge step. That's a and it's right. And and getting to Rana's question about Iran. Mm -hmm. they're sending a message that they want to avoid a larger, broader war, mm -hmm. uh, which, of course, would be, uh, would be catastrophic for the region, especially now as Israel and Saudi Arabia are trying to build uh, common ground, find common ground, and, and perhaps make peace. Uh, this, this is potentially uh, a game changer in the Middle East, and it could change the game in either direction. That's why we have to watch this so closely. Well, oh, thank you. Extremely complicated. Thank so much to It is. It's, and, and so tragic yes. for everybody over there. Yeah. You know, you see the suffering, the Palestinian people. Now their they're, they're gas, their I mean, they're oil, their gas, mm -hmm. their, their <laughs> electricity, food. their mm -hmm. food, all of that is being cut off. Mm -hmm. But then also at the same time, you've got the Israelis that are living under fear of attack, mm -hmm. yeah. rocket attack, kidnappings, all of this. So, so yeah. you know, the next several days are going to be critical the in terms of the toll. Absolutely, and that's going to go, surely that's going to go on for a while, yeah. the yeah. humanitarian crisis there. I mean, we're only beginning to see what it's like in the next several days and weeks. It will take weeks, even if they settled it tomorrow, it would take weeks to, to undo uh, or to repair uh, some of the damage over there. Is there any indication of how long the fighting could go on? You know, I, I, I've covered uh, four wars in Israel, and, and uh, the shortest of them uh, was about two weeks. 
uh, but then you had the war with Hezbollah that was much longer, and that was that was uh, in northern northern Israel. And you know that's something. Uh, an, another point I wanted to make that uh, you know when Danny was asking me about the U.S. and and the, the potential for a wider war. Um, one thing that Israeli military commanders are particularly worried about now is the prospect of a two-front war, where Iran says to their proxies in southern Lebanon, Hezbollah, mm -hmm. say, hey, you know what? Time for you guys to fire some missiles. Mm -hmm. So then, right, now you've got, you know, missiles coming in from, from Hamas in Gaza. You've got missiles coming in from, from southern Lebanon into northern Israel. Mm -hmm. That's a strategic nightmare for the Israeli armed forces. Mm -hmm.